Lecture 13 covers sections 5.1 through 5.2. At the end of today's lecture, you should be able to understand the operation of a heat engine, a refrigerator, and a heat pump. You should also be able to understand and apply the formulation of thermal conversion efficiency for a heat engine and the coefficient of performance for both refrigerators and heat pumps. You should be able to understand the Kelvin-Planck statement as well as the Clausius statement. For us to begin, let us talk about heat engines. And for us to talk about heat engines, we have to introduce the concept of a thermal reservoir. A thermal reservoir is a body that is able to maintain a constant temperature, regardless of the quantity of heat supplied to it or heat removed. In the figure below, we have a high temperature thermal reservoir, TH, and a low temperature thermal reservoir, TL. We have assumed that, say, the ocean or atmosphere are thermal reservoirs. That is, their temperatures will not change, depending upon how much heat or combustion byproduct we put into it. However, through the past 150 years of industrialization, we've seen that we're actually able to increase both the temperature of the atmosphere and the ocean. Now, a heat engine operates between a high temperature and a low temperature thermal reservoir. Our heat engine is denoted by a square, abbreviated HE. Now, for heat engines to work, we need to take a quantity of heat, QH, from our high temperature reservoir. If you think about your car, combustion of gasoline provides your thermal energy, i.e. this would be our high temperature thermal reservoir. This thermal energy is then converted into mechanical energy, and the remainder of the heat is rejected to our low temperature reservoir, which would be atmosphere. So from TH, we bring in QH into our heat engine, we produce work, and we reject the remainder of the heat, QL, to our low temperature reservoir. Our power output, denoted by P sub naught, sometimes referred to as work, denoted by W, is our difference of our high temperature heat less our low temperature heat, i.e. QH minus QL. The thermal efficiency of a heat engine is defined as our power output per heat input. That is, eta sub T is P out per QH. Now, we just defined power output as QH minus QL, i.e. our heat supplied less our heat rejected. If we make the substitution into our expression for our thermal efficiency, we have QH minus QL per QH, or 1 minus QL per QH. Now, let us look at the evaluation of our equation of efficiency for a heat engine. Inventor says he has developed a heat engine that receives 1,000 kilojoules of energy from a high temperature reservoir. The engine produces 410 kilojoules of power output, while rejecting 600 kilojoules of energy to a low temperature reservoir. We want to evaluate the efficiency of this heat engine. Does it make physical sense? Well, if we calculate the power output of this heat engine based upon our heat supplied and our heat rejected, we'd find the piece of naught being equal to QH minus QL would be 1000 minus 600 kilojoules. And theoretically, this engine could only produce 400 kilojoules of work, which is less than the 410 kilojoules of work stated by the inventor. Therefore, this engine does not make any physical sense. It's not physically realistic, and we do not need to evaluate its efficiency.